Hello, I'm Yu Minchen from Tsinghua University. Today, I will present our work, Scalable Persist Memory File System with Kernel and User Space Collaboration. This is a joint work with my colleagues Yu Yu, Bo Hong, and my advisor Stu from Tsinghua University, as well as Andrew Apachiduso and Ramsey Apachiduso from University of Wisconsin-Madison. Over the past 10 years, non-volatile memory technologies, such as persist memory, has been widely studied due to their many promising hardware features. Persist memory sits on the memory bus and connects directly to processor integrated memory controller, so CPUs can access it using load and store instructions with better addressability. It can also store data like hard disks that survives power outages. Most importantly, it delivers high bandwidth and low latency, which is comparable to that of DRAM. After nearly a decade of anticipation, such devices are finally commercially available with the release of Intel Opt memory in 2019. Our experiments show that a single Optum device can provide a read bandwidth of 6.7 GB per second and a read bandwidth of 2.3 GB per second. It can be configured into two modes, which are AppDirect mode and Memory mode. For AppDirect mode, Optum memory is managed into a separate storage pool and applications have direct access to it. While in memory mode, DRAM serves as cache of Optum, and the Optum memory is used as a single large memory pool. A classic way of managing storage devices is using a file system. In this way, the storage space is structured into a hierarchical directory, and applications can use standard APIs to access and store data. However, when we still use the file system to manage persistent memory, there are more factors that should be considered. First, a file system should be efficient and this has already been extensively studied by Passwork. They removed some heavyweight layers in the software stack, such as block device and page cache, to reduce redundant memory copies. They also proposed many new techniques, such as efficient space management and lightweight consistent guarantees. Second, a file system should also be highly scalable. Today's multiple platform consists of tens to hundreds of physical cores and applications can leverage such a platform to process requests in parallel. Meanwhile, persist memory also enables high concurrency with multiple channels. As a result, it's very important for a file system to achieve high scalability, which, however, is not well addressed by most of the world. And let me explain why. Existing persist memory file system can be roughly categorized into two types. One is kernel file systems. As you can see, the file system is placed in the kernel, and applications can use syscalls to trap into the kernel and access files. These kernel file systems are implemented by overriding virtual file system functions, such as PMFS and NOVA. As a result, they ensure safety and are highly compatible by providing standard APIs to applications. However, kernel file systems still increase software overhead due to the existence of the virtual file systems and syscall. Also, kernel file systems are hard to scale well, since the VFS layer often use globe locks, which is hard to be bypassed. To address the problem of kernel file systems, many recent work proposed to deploy a file system in user space directly. In this way, applications can directly access file data in user space without introducing software overhead. However, they often introduce a third-party trusted service to handle critical updates, such as metadata. As a result, the reintroduced centralized component makes the scalability issue more serious. Moreover, user space file systems are also vulnerable to stray writes. For example, if a bug program misuses some pointers, then the PM space can be easily corrupted. So our design goal is, can we combine the good properties of both kernel and user space file systems, and at the same time achieve high scalability? To achieve this goal, our approach is using a kernel and user space collaborative file system architecture, which is named Kuku. Kuku is based on a client-server processing model with two parts. One is KFS, which is a standalone thread placed in the kernel to process metadata operations and enforce access control by talking to permission bits in the page table. Another part is Uli. It's a user space library and it can be linked to programs which provides standard APIs to applications and interacts with in KFS. As you can see, this client-server process model also has a centralized component. So the key idea in this paper is trying to shift tasks from KFS to ULIB as much as possible. 
and some novel techniques such as collaborative indexing, two-level locking, and version race are used to ease the load of KFS and thus improve the scalability of both metadata and data operations. Our experiments show that Kuko achieves one order of magnitude higher support for high contention workloads and fully saturates the PM bandwidth for data operations. In the following part, I will first show the scalability problem of existing file systems, and then introduce our proposed Kuko architecture and show some results that Kuko achieves, and finally give a brief summary and a conclusion. We first measure the scalability of a state-of-the-art persistent memory file system named Nova. It incorporates many scalable design principles, such as giving each inode a separate log, and try to avoid using globe logs by partitioning free spaces. However, our experiments show that Nova still fails to scale on operations that are concurrently performed in shared directories. As shown in the figure, if we concurrently create delete or rename files in a shared directory. Their throughput is almost unchanged as we, as we increase the number of threads. This is mainly because VFS needs to log the parent directory when updating subfiles. Several user space file systems are proposed to reduce the software overhead caused by kernel file systems. One example is Area. It allows user space applications to access file data directly but requires a trusted process to handle all metadata updates and coordinates concurrent access using a distributed log service. So all related requests should send to this centralized component. Strata is a recent file system that removes this centralized service. It allows applications to append data and metadata updates to a local operation log, but still requires a background thread to digest the data in the log to PM space. As a result, the processing capacity of this background thread limits the overall scalability, since front-end operations will be blocked if the log is full. Next, we describe how Kuku improves scalability by using kernel and user space collaboration. As shown in the figure, the PM space is mapped to user space directly, and the user space library enables applications to read and write file data directly. At the same time, KFS in the kernel can receive metadata requests and process them on behalf of ULIPS. It also carefully controls the writes to from ULIPS, and this is achieved by manipulating the permission bits in the page table. Cuckoo is based on a client server process model. It's easy to understand that the overall throughput is determined by how fast the KFS process each request. For example, if KFS re requires L of time to process a single request, then the maximum throughput Cuckoo can achieve is 1 divided L. The key idea of Kuku to achieve high scalability is trying to reduce the value of L. And the basic approach is shifting tasks from KFS to ULIB. For example, we offload some time-consuming tasks such as metadata indexing and concurrent control to user space. In this talk, we will explain in detail how we offload metadata indexing from KFS to ULIB. As you know, a file system manages the storage space into a hierarchical directory this directory consists of two important metadata. One is the de-entry list, which is owned by each directory, and the element in the list maps a file name to an inode number. The other is the file metadata, also known as inode. If we want to find a specific file, we need to look up recursively from the root node to the target directory containing this file. And this may incur a number of random memory access. And this overhead becomes even more serious when the directory contains a huge number of subfiles or the directory depth is high. We introduce collaborative indexing to shift the past name resolution task to user space. The basic idea is very simple. Since the PM space is mapped to user space and ULIB have direct access to it, so we can let the ULIB to prelocate related metadata items in user space and put the addresses of them in the request when sending a request to the KFS. In this way, KFS can update the metadata items directly with the given addresses. For example, if we want to create a file, then we need to create a new inode of this file and update the de-entry list of the parent directory by inserting a new de-entry. By using our collaborative indexing mechanism, ULIB is required to pass the address of the predecessor of the target de-entry in the parent de-entry list, so KFS can insert a new de-entry after the predecessor. While the idea of collaborative indexing is very simple, 
we need more efforts to ensure the correctness and safety when there are concurrent updates. For example, ULIP may read inconsistent metadata when KFS is updating it. And ULIP may send obsolete metadata to KFS when another ULIP changes this metadata. To address the first question, we ensure that a shared pointer should always point to a consistent item. As we can see, a directory tree consists of a hierarchical de entry list, so the key insight is to ensure the consistency of the de entry list. Luckily, in all file system operations, there are only inserts and deletes to the de entry list. So we only need to ensure that when KFS is updating a de entry list, you can always see a consistent di directory tree. We achieve this by managing each de entry list using a log free escape list. KFS inserts or deletes elements in the list by using a sequence of atomic instructions. As a result, ULIV can scan the list without seeing an unfinished update. To address the second question, we need to ensure that shared pointers should always be up to date. To, for example, since ULIV are scanning the directory tree in a log free manner, so it's possible for ULIV to read an already deleted item. We prevent this happening by using a classic epoch based recommendation technique. In addition, absolute pointers may cause the de-entry in the de-entry list out of order. For example, if we want to create a new file with the name of 4, then you need first to locate the predecessor, which is the second de-entry, and pass its address to KFS. At the same time, KFS is inserting another file with name of 3, and as a result, the order of the de-entry will be violated. To prevent this from happening, KFS is required to validate adjacent nodes before inserting. Due to the time limit, other design details are omitted in this talk. If you are interested, please check our paper. Next, we show some experiment results of our work. We first evaluate the metadata scalability by testing create operations. As shown in the figure, the x-axis is the number of threads and the y-axis is the throughput. We can see that Google exhibits the highest throughput among the compare systems. When multiple threads create files in a shared folder, we find that only Cuckoo exhibits high scalability, and the throughput of Cuckoo is 13.8 times higher than others. Here is a brief summary and a conclusion. Thank you for watching.